Hey guys, before Aaron presents his new and exciting FNM update, I've got some extra new and exciting news to share about Real Time History's new in-depth documentary on the Franco-Prussian War, Glory and Defeat. They've been covering the conflict in real time every week since the beginning of the summer, and they're still going. Right now, they're covering the brutal guerrilla war being waged after the French defeat at Sedan. You can watch this documentary for free on YouTube over at the Real Time History channel, and you can get bonus episodes by signing up to their Patreon page. The guys over at Real Time History are doing a tremendous job covering this often overlooked conflict, which also happens to be one of the primary conflicts that you guys can fight in when fire and maneuver releases. So go over and learn as much as you can about the war, and maybe use some of that knowledge to get an edge over your opponent when our game releases in March. There's even talk about their team covering the Austro-Prussian War of 1866 next year, so let's show real-time history a ton of support, and don't forget to let them know we sent you. Hello everybody, I'm Aaron, the lead developer at Armchair Interactive. Let's hop right into a lobby and I'll showcase some new features. So I'm gonna pick Germany. And the first thing you might notice is when you buy units, or let's say you don't buy units, but you're ready up, now it'll no longer let you start the game. And that applies to everybody in the lobby. So that's just a tiny quality of life improvement. Uh, another cooler feature is now there is a kill to win bar that you could adjust for gameplay. So normally, the victory requirement was you needed to kill 100% of the units on the board, so you had to completely annihilate your enemy. You can now adjust that to anywhere between 50 and 100%. So let's just say I wanted to kill 60% of the units before I won, I'd set it to 60%. And lastly, you can notice the start battle at the bottom of the screen. We're going to be moving that. Same with the ready up feature. It'll be at the bottom looking pretty rather than these tiny buttons over here. But with all that said, I've got my units, so let's hop right into a... Uh-oh. Hey everyone, I'm Sebastian, and I will be assisting Aaron today in this preview. Um, and another feature we've actually added is the ability to kick players. So you can just click on any player and... Yeah. So with that said, let's hop right into the battle. All right, now that we're in game, let me show you some of the cool things we've been working on. You may already see it. We have added in two new types of units, artillery and cavalry. Now, they're still very early. Not all the artwork's in, not all the animations have been completed, but yeah, I'll show you how they work mechanically. So let's start off with artillery. Now, artillery is generally quite slow. In this case, this guy can only move one tile at a time but they make up for that with their exceptional range. So this guy can shoot three tiles, hitting this guy way over here. Yeah, they're also very vulnerable, so you don't want them out in the open, you want to defend them. Over here we've got cavalry, which has the opposite problems. So generally they can't fire very far, if they can even fire at all. In this case, these guys are equipped with spears, so they're just melee, but they can move very far. So he can move three tiles away. And also, they can move diagonally, which infantry is typically unable to do, unless they're in march column, and artillery can never do. So they're very maneuverable and good for charging generally. But yeah, enough with them. Let me show you something else we've been working on. So this guy has cheats, so he can move very far, but let me move him up two tiles. There we go. And you'll notice we've been working on smooth movement. Nice. And the last thing I want to show you is we've been working on entrenchment. So now you can order units to entrench. There we go. And bang. So you'll see that these little anti-cavalry spikes have popped up in front of them. That means they are entrenched. And this is where they can fire upon now. So any enemy unit that automatically walks into this tile will be fired upon. So let's go ahead and showcase that. Let me switch teams really quickly and move this guy up. And now you can see, without even having to give this guy an order, he will automatically fire at this enemy unit walking into the tile. 
There we go. So you can see he fired and took the cohesion damage. And this can happen any amount of times. So let me move these guys in. And they fire. And you can see, of course, they do the cohesion, two points. And another guy walks in, and he gets fired upon it as well. And you will notice that this guy did not take damage because he didn't move. It's only when you move into, or just move in general while inside of Overwatch that you will take damage. So now, let me switch back to the other team. Team one. And I'm getting encircled here. I gotta run. So, of course, I'm gonna move backwards. And the second you move with Overwatch or do any kind of maneuver order, you lose it. So you lose the Overwatch. So yeah, expect this in the next update. And now that's all I want to show you. Now Seb will be showing you all the visual things that we've been working on. Thanks Aaron. I just wanted to go over a few visual updates that we have included into the latest version of the game. The first one being the God Rays. We have now included light rays that shine through the clouds onto the battlefield. These light rays will be much more apparent when we start including those homes, windmills, and other 3D objects that were shown in the last dev diary. Also, we now have clouds that emit shadows onto the battlefield. Aside from this, we have also included a fog that surrounds the battlefield. These are small visual updates that we included that are also going to be dynamically changed depending on the weather and the time of day. Thanks Seb. This update will officially mark the end of Fire and Maneuver, pre-alpha, bringing us officially to Alpha 1.0. We plan on rolling this update out next Friday, and by then some things you've seen today will be more polished, like movement and the depiction of artillery and cavalry. We're also trying to squeeze in adding the British and Russian factions, as well as our new armory system, which lets players assign different weapons to their units. But we'll see how much we can get done. Remember, you can gain access now by signing up to our Patreon for just $3. Just about every weekend, we host tournaments on our community Discord server that all patrons can participate in. Last week's winners were Yossi Abasi in first place and Three Taylor in second place. Lastly, don't forget to check out Real Time History's new documentary, Glory and Defeat.